Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're doing another virtual box video. You guys seem to love this virtual box stuff, so let me know what kind of virtual machine videos you want to see. Do you want to see tips and tricks of virtual box? Do you want to see how Windows or other operating systems perform or how to install a certain operating system? Just let me know in the comments below. But anyway, today we're going to install an operating system that I've actually never really used before and that's going to be Windows 8.1 so that is what we're going to be installing today alright so first off let's talk about VirtualBox real quick because there are some changes uh, compared to my last video so as you can see if you go to VirtualBox.org that's where you can download VirtualBox now as you can see we have VirtualBox 6.0 this big button right here this is the latest version of VirtualBox. It actually just came out, uh, I believe it just came out the other day, um, not long ago at all, maybe a week or so ago. I am actually not using uh, 6.0.8 in this video. I am still running a 5.2 version. The 6.0 version is pretty different. It's been redesigned, it's all new basically. So I'm just still using 5.2 because I like it and it's, you know, I'm familiar with it and that's what I want to use. And as you can see, if you want to use it as well, all you have to do is when you click on the big download button, you just click on this link right here that says 5.2 builds and it takes you to the latest releases uh, for that. And you can see the last release for this one was actually May the 13th. So just click on your host and you can download it but if you want to use 6.0.8 it's pretty similar but it is kind of different so uh, it might be different than what I'm doing in this video once you download VirtualBox though you'll be greeted with the uh, manager so right here if you have any virtual machines that's where they will appear and then you have your little uh, welcome message and all that so let's go ahead and begin the uh, creation of the virtual machine so the first thing you want to do is click new and you're going to get this window pop up here. This is where you name your operating system. So I'm just going to call it Windows 8.1 since that's what we're installing. You can name it whatever you want though. But if you name it a name that is similar to the operating system name, as you can see, it automatically fills it in for you right here. So yes, we are going to be using 8.1. 64-bit and it's Microsoft Windows. Hit continue. Now right here is where you allocate your RAM. So a good rule of thumb here is you don't want to use more than half of your RAM on your virtual machine. So my computer actually has 16 gigs of RAM so I have plenty of RAM that I can use but a good rule of thumb for Windows operating systems is four gigs of RAM. So by default, they give you just a little over two gigs. I'm actually gonna go to 4,000 megabytes, which is going to be about four gigabytes. So like I said, I have 16 gigs of RAM. I could go all the way up to eight gigs if I wanted to, but four gigs is a good rule of thumb. Just know what RAM your computer has. If you're going to be doing a lot of, you know, switching back and forth between the virtual machine and your host, then you want to have more RAM. Like I said, 4 gigs is a good amount for me. I'm going to hit continue. Now it's going to ask you about a hard disk. It's going to recommend a size for you and you can say create a virtual hard disk now. So that is what we're going to do since we do not have one. And you want to use a virtual box disk image for this right here. Now on the storage on the disk, what I like to do is dynamically allocate it. So basically what that means is if you set the size to 40 gigs, it's not going to take 40 gigs of your host machine storage right away. Over time, it's going to take more and more as you put stuff on your virtual machine. If you were to do a fixed size, it would immediately take 40 gigs out of your host machine for this virtual machine. So dynamically allocated 
is what I recommend choosing here. So that's what we're going to pick. And then here's the part where you can choose your location for your Windows uh, or your location for your virtual machine files and your storage. Now you can pick whatever you want here, but again, just keep in mind whatever storage capacity your computer has. I have 512 gigs, so I'm really not too worried about it. And also, this is going to be a test machine, so I'm just going to leave it at 40 gigs. But like I said, you can put it to whatever you want. I'm actually going to bump mine up just a tad bit to 50 gigs. So you can hit create on that. And it's going to create your virtual machine. So here it is, Windows 8.1. Now, before we start it up, we need to do a few things here. So let's go into the settings. And basically what I like to do is just check over everything here and make sure it all looks good. So this stuff all looks all right here. If we go into our system, you can see this is where you can change your RAM. So that's very cool that uh, you don't have to delete your whole machine. You can change your RAM uh, whenever you feel like it. I'm going to go ahead and unclick floppy and optical drive since uh, I have neither of those. But you don't have to. You can just uh, leave them if you want. Processor again, just leave it at one CPU. That's plenty. All this stuff looks all right. Video memory, it goes all the way up here. Now you can choose your acceleration. I like to enable both of those and then turn it all the way up here. That's just going to make your machine run a little smoother. It allows the virtual machine to use your uh, graphics on your actual host machine. It just makes it smoother. Again, you do not have to do that, especially if you don't have a lot of video memory. But regardless, if you choose this or not this should be all the way to the right you need to make sure it's all the way to the right these other ones here look just fine now storage this is just your different storage devices here not concerned with any of that audio network your ports here's where you could uh, connect your usb if you wanted to shared folders if you wanted a host folder on your machine to be shared you could uh, put it on there. So everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. It's going to save our settings. And now we can go ahead and click on Start. OK, so when you actually start up the machine, it's not going to start because there's no operating system uh, or ISO file selected yet. So you need to go and select it. So just click on the little folder icon and you just simply choose wherever your ISO file is stored so here's mine right here I'm gonna hit open on that and then once your file is selected you can finally click on the start button now if everything goes right here it should start and boot into So once you click start, it should actually boot in. And by the way, I made just a little mistake. Uh, when I said in the menu that you could uncheck the floppy and the optical drive, only uncheck the floppy because the virtual machine actually uses the optical to boot. Uh, when I actually clicked on it to start, it gave me an error, said no bootable medium found. So be sure you have the optical drive checked. That's a little mistake there uh, I made. Alright, so we are now here into the setup and installation process on Windows 8. I'll go ahead and get that little pop-up out the way. Now you may notice it is kind of lagging a little bit for me, but that's because I'm screen recording as well. Yours should be a lot smoother than mine choose your language and all that and click next and hit install now your setup is then going to start and it's just a typical windows installation from here on out you just 
All right, so the first thing is actually asking me is a product key. So you do need to put a product key in. No, I will not be providing you with a product key. So once you put your product key in there, you just accept the license terms, hit next. And now we can uh, click what we want to do here. Now what you want to do is click custom and you want to make sure that uh, it is recognizing the 50 gigs that you have set aside or whatever number you've set aside for your virtual machine. So make sure that's selected and hit next. And now it's just a waiting game. So sit back and wait for it to install Windows. This could go very quickly or it could take a while, but uh, I will come back when this decides to get done. All right, so it is done. It actually didn't take long at all. I think it was only about five, 10 something minutes maybe. Uh, so not too long at all. But right now we're gonna restart and it's gonna continue with the installation. As you can see, it says right there, uh, press any key to boot. Do not do that, just let it do its thing itself. And we're gonna probably start back up here into the rest of the installation. All right, so we're finally here to the final bit of information they need. So you can go ahead and personalize your PC, choose whatever color you want. I'm gonna pick orange just because it's my favorite color. And then you need to name your computer, of course. So I'm just going to name it uh, just some random office PC, something. But you can name it whatever you want, of course. Hit the next button. Now it's going to ask you here if you want to use Express Settings. Or if you don't want to use them, you can click Customize and pick each individual setting. Uh, yourself but I like to go ahead and just click Express Settings especially for uh, just a test virtual machine alright so now we're gonna be setting up our computer account so we'll wait for that to load here and obviously they want you to sign into a Microsoft account unfortunately you actually have to sign into a Microsoft account on Windows 8. You don't have to on Windows 10, but you got to do it here. So just go ahead and sign in real quick or create a new one. You can delete it later. And you can also create a, just a domain account uh, later, which I have no idea why they don't let you do that in setup, but oh well. So once you uh, enter your account and all that, it's going to uh, finish everything up, finalize everything. And we're in the home stretch now. We're getting the, you know, hi, welcome, we're getting things ready for you message, all that. So give it a second here and we should be on the desktop. All right, we are finally on the desktop. It took forever for some reason, but we're finally here. You can see here's the desktop and here is the terrible <laughs> thought they were uh, doing a tablet. Uh, I don't even the start screen that's what they call it I'm pretty sure but yeah you can see we're in Windows 10 everything looks good now there's one last thing you need to do uh, before you can actually use your virtual machine so if I resize this window you can see that it does not scale to the window and if I full screen it does not properly scale full screen wise so in order to fix that, all you have to do is go up to your menu bar and when you go to the devices, you go down to the Insert Guest Editions CD Image. And when you click on that, what it's going to do is insert the VirtualBox Guest Editions to your virtual machine. So when you do that, you want to click on your file explorer and you can see there it is so double click it and it's gonna open up some applications so so you just want to click on this one right here that says VBOX Windows applications and you just go ahead and click on yes 
and it's going to open up an installer window. Now when the installer window opens, you just simply go through it like you would any installation. And what this is going to do is solve all those uh, hardware issues. So it's going to fix the screen resolution, it's going to fix a few other things here and there, but you've got to have these guest editions if you want the virtual machine to take full advantage of your host machine. So just go ahead and let this install. We should have to actually restart the virtual machine, but I will show you what happens when it restarts. Alright, so once it gets done, you can go ahead and click on the finish button to reboot now. And it's going to restart the virtual machine for you. And when you boot back in, you should notice the screen resolution will actually change. Another thing I noticed too is look how much smoother my cursor is moving. Moving? Moving. So once you get those guest initials installed, it just, you know, it just allows the machine to work a lot better, a lot smoother. So that is why you definitely want to make sure you get those installed. But let's let it restart and I'll actually show you in real time the screen resolution changed to normal. All right, we've logged back in here. I just entered my password. Now you notice the screen resolution has not changed yet, but just give it a second here to load everything up and you should notice it change. And there it goes. So we are now full screen here on the Windows 8 virtual machine. If I go out of full screen mode, you notice that it automatically scales properly to a window no matter how much I adjust it. And if I were to move this to my secondary display, it would automatically adjust to that as well. So our Windows 8.1 is completely installed and ready to be used. So guys, thank you all for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you had any troubles during the install, leave those questions below and I'll try to answer them. And also other people in the comments, if you see a question that's unanswered, help somebody out if you know what is wrong. Anyways guys, thank you for watching this video. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Definitely, definitely subscribe to the channel, please. I hope you guys enjoy these virtual machine videos. I do enjoy making them. They do pretty well. Let me know, like I said, what other virtual machine related stuff would you like to see on the 2018 MacBook Air or just on Mac in general. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you later.